well, it's Friday. It's February 25th, 2022. It's the last Friday in the second month of the year. Well, good morning, I'm Andy Johnson. Thanks for being here. We, thanks for joining us on the program this morning. AM Prime, let's tell you what's coming down the pike. Of course, we'll be talking with Mr. Steve Antoine in the second hour of the program. He has some concerns about it. He says that um, uh, the Afro community in Trinidad and Tobago owns nothing. He wants to talk about that. He wants to ask why that is the case. It's a discussion we began a couple of weeks ago. We will continue with him on that. Uh, we share with you the latest in the region. We'll go to Barbados this morning and St. Lucia as time permits. Um, up ahead still, Joanne Tigress Rowley. She's a Calypsonian of note. You know, she was uh, part of this group called the United Sisters. She's been here on her own. Last time she was big in public, she had a song about having to deal with depression. What is she doing these days? And how is she responding to what we're dealing with, with carnival, among other things, uh, in the state that it is? But right now, with us. I'll just tell you what's on the front of the book in one of the newspapers this morning, in The Express. On page three of The Express, here's the headline. A bloodstained aggressor. World leaders condemn the Russian president for invading Ukraine. And another story says 137 civilians and military persons were killed. That's the claim from the Russian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, uh, the, the Ukrainian president, as a matter of fact, as the number of Russian people killed at that point sometime yesterday. We expect that those numbers are much higher than that. Another headline on this page, CARICOM calls for an immediate withdrawal of the troops. They say that the invasion of Ukraine was against all reason. And the Trinidad and Tobago government is concerned over what it calls a threat to global peace. Well, joining us now to put some kind of a local and regional perspective on that, a man who knows what it is to be detained, uh, by aggressors. Uh, Winston Dukran, he's acted as Prime Minister in Trinidad and Tobago. He's been a governor of the Central Bank. He's been a Minister of Planning and Development and much more. And he's an, an intellectual and an academic. He's written a lot about uh, issues about uh, affairs of the state. Uh, he joins us now to bring a perspective on that. Good morning, sir. Good to see you. Good morning, Andy. It's a pleasure to be here with you. All right, so let's, let's talk about this from where, I mean, what were your first reactions to, to what began yesterday? Because in the weeks leading up to it, with the Russian build-up on, on, the, on the border of, of this country for weeks, um, at one point, the president of, of Russia was saying that he had to do that to bring other world leaders to the table, and there was no question about invading. Well, all of that fell apart at some time yesterday, in the wee hours of the morning there. Yeah, well, my, my first reaction um, was that diplomacy um, was, was taken for a ride um, over the last couple of weeks. And war is not something that we ever agree on. And therefore, the consequences of that war is what comes to my mind immediately in terms of the issues of human death, human suffering, and all that goes with that. Um, so I looked at it from the humanitarian aspect, and I, I felt a sense of sadness. Yeah. Um, some people are saying it is, it is just a matter of time before the Russian troops overwhelm the people in Ukraine, and Ukraine will end back up as a, as a Russian state. Is that correct? Well, clearly, um, it, it's a power play that is taking place. Uh, and Russia would like to bring back Ukraine into its political ambit. Uh, and I believe the intervention that has happened is to create a situation for political change in Ukraine uh, in order to be able to get a government um, that is perhaps far more sympathetic um, to the dictates of the Russian president and the Russian security interests. Yeah. Is, is it that, um, I mean, you say security interests, but is it not more than that? Um, Mr. Putin just wants to recreate what was the Soviet Union and he will stop at almost nothing to do that? My assessment at this stage is that in the first rounds, it will be really a matter of a change of, of political regime uh, and to prevent um, Ukraine from being a, a place that can pose a security risk um, to Russia. 
uh, as a re-emerged global power. Um, whether it means it will move towards the recreation of the, the old Soviet Union will depend on how the world reacts and what the consequences of this action will be and whether world peace um, is at such a high stake that it will create um, even a larger global alliance. Um, but at this stage, I didn't get that impression that that may be the immediate goal. Yeah. And, and he's been complaining about the fact that he said that uh, uh, this country was being used by, by the West and by, by NATO to threaten Russia's peace and security. To what extent there's any validity to that? Well, every country has a right to defend its own um, situation, but it must not do so at the expense of, of another country's right for territorial integrity. Uh, and this is the fine line that has been crossed in this particular measure. So I think what we are probably likely to see here um, is, is the condemnation uh, of the invasion from the point of view of territorial integrity uh, um, being violated uh, on one hand, but on the other hand, we will find countries who are claiming that Russia have a right to defend its interests. Now, such situations ought to be dealt with through the diplomatic channels. Um, there is nothing in the air that has provoked uh, an immediate action, and the failure of the diplomatic uh, processes is of some concern. Um, the question we must ask now is whether or not the world at large uh, and the institutions in the world have the capacity to entertain with uh, diplomatic solutions. And it is somewhat surprising that, that we could end up in a war uh, at this time when the appetite for such appears to have waned over recent times. Uh, it's, it's a lesson that we must not take anything for granted because we'd, we'd said that the last World War was, was ended in 1945 and that the world has moved uh, significantly away from that, although there have been, you know, been, been military action of one sort or another in different countries and different spheres of, of, of activity in different parts of the world, but, but nobody contemplated that we would be facing the prospect of another World War. Well, if the situation ex escalates um, out of control uh, and, and there appears to be uh, the elements of that, um, clearly, as, as my colleague and friend uh, Andy Knight said, we are on the cusp of, of uh, World War III. Uh, I think at this stage, there might be a more limited goal, um, which is to really establish the control uh, of the government in, in Ukraine that will be supportive of the Russian interests. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned him, Professor Knight. I think he, he's, he's, his latest book is either out or, or it's being talked about what he calls the coming global disorder. This is an example of probably what he's talking about, what he has been seeing. The global yes. disorder. Uh, yes. Professor Knight has, has anticipated that the current global order um, is not going to sus be sustained. And his new thinking, and I had some discussions with him on this matter, is, is, the is a new global disorder uh, in which we are in. And what does that mean? It means that there really is going to be erratic behavior uh, in terms of global relations and in the conduct of international affairs. And this erratic behavior um, is not going to be based on any traditional norms that we have become accustomed to. And some of the fundamental premises and principles that have influenced the conduct of international relations are now up uh, in the air. Uh, and, and therefore, the global disorder um, is, is perhaps going to continue. And this, of course, has not to do only with what's going on in the Ukraine, but has to do 
when you divide the issues uh, of, of the balance of power in the world. Yeah, I, and, and one was thinking that, okay, so it would be in, in the issue of, of trade among countries, technology, um, scientific exchange and all of that, who has more cards, uh, we would play better hands, but it's, it's sort of descended into the prospect now of, of actual military action, one country to the other. That's right. Um, I think the introduction of the, the military aspect is, is, is a new tool, um, well, not necessarily a new tool, but a very potent tool that has been used in order to, to facilitate um, the global order that one would like to see emerging in the new balance of power. What's your response to the statement both by the government of Trinidad and Tobago and the, the, the Caribbean community? Well, in the CARICOM, in statement attributed to CARICOM, this is what it says, that the Caribbean community strongly condemned the military attacks and invasion of Ukraine by Russia. In this statement from Georgetown, uh, CARICOM called for the immediate and complete withdrawal of the military presence and the cessation of any further actions that may intensify the current perilous situation in that country. Well, it's one thing to call for those things, but what are the, 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 the prospects? What's the reality? Is that, the, 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 well, I think it's a, it's a politically a correct statement um, in the circumstances, uh, but really it is not meant to have any effect. Um, it is merely to satisfy the, the domestic community that it is taking a position. Now, that position really does not point towards how do we resolve it? Um, because there is a need for even a higher level of diplomacy. And although the United Nations um, has been challenged in the past to solve problems of this nature, or at least it provides a platform. And I think we should rest our case um, squarely on trying to enact um, the institution of the United Nations um, notwithstanding the difficulties in, in so doing, uh, as a platform to promote the principles of good order. Uh, what are the principles of good order? It is the, uh, the role of um, ensuring that international, the norms of international law, the, the obligations for territorial integrity are held, the, the resolution of problems through peace, and of course, not to have the cost of violence uh, and its implication um, to, to the lives and livelihood of people who are going to be affected directly and the consequences are great. Yeah. What, what is the, the significance? Uh, how, much, how much weight does, does it have, a statement coming from countries in this part of the world, CARICOM making this statement? What, what, what is, what is the, the real meaning and significance of that? Because, I mean, we, we, we are, as, as there's a term that we use here, we are PWATs in this kind of global, uh, global power struggle and so on. How, how important is it for us to be seen to be saying something? Well, I think it's important to take a, a position, but I think it's also important to move towards a, a position that leads to, to a solution. And I think uh, the, the non-aligned movement uh, of which Trinidad and Tobago uh, is a member, um, perhaps will get a new life. Uh, uh, and it can be used as a, as a buffer and a leverage in order to make public, global public opinions clear. It, it must not, of course, uh, in so doing, um, find itself simply expo simply um, saying things that are platitudes uh, and must go into how do you create a new level of diplomacy. But in the meantime, the war is on and people are dying. And it doesn't seem to be a, any voices that are going to stop that in the short term. Precisely because diplomacy had, had been tried. Well, I, diplomacy yes, several, is, several, was always been tried. Yeah. Diplomacy, diplomacy prior to the conflict has tried and has not worked so far. But diplomacy during the conflict is also necessary. Yeah. Uh, but how, how do you... 
put that against what Mr. Putin said yesterday, that anybody who seeks to interfere, we will see uh, a response as we've never seen before. <laughs> that is a frightening kind of threat. Yes, it is. Um, but I think he's talking really about the, the response of, of the countries um, in terms of economic sanctions, um, in terms of military support um, for the Ukrainian um, government. Uh, and in that sense, he's talking about that. But I don't think um, we should rule out, even during the conflict, the prospect of having a, a diplomatic initiative. Perhaps other countries that have not so far been directly involved or participating in, in, in the power play that has taken place may have a role to play now that we are facing much more than a power situation, but a, a, major, a major challenge um, to, to the world peace itself. Yeah, and, and thus far, what we know of the reaction is the announcement of sanctions of one kind or another, both by the President of the, of the United States, the Prime Minister of England, I'm not sure where, where else it is coming from, but we have the response from, from China in which Mr. Xi is saying that that is not the, the, the approach to take. So what is in his view? Well, clearly, um, the, the two issues here is whether sanctions at all will work, uh, whether, whether the will to effect it is there, and whether the consequences of the sanctions will not, may not be self, self-inflicted wounds, because it's always a two-way street. So that appears to be an immediate response in the absence of a, of a, a, a more strategic military response, um, which everyone is not likely to pursue. And then there is also the issue uh, of um, dealing with, with the internal issues in both um, Ukraine and perhaps in, in Russia. Uh, in terms of trying to establish um, a, a new a new approach to 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 dealing with this, in my view, uh, what has happened is going to unleash um, some new dynamics in the local political scene, particularly in, in Ukraine, and and I think this was perhaps meant to do that from a Russian perspective. Yeah, but that you mean um, the, those those parts of Ukraine where the people, if, if not the people, the leaders had been saying that well, they prefer to be with Russia, yeah, and that that might that might become an issue for Ukraine as a country in order to return to dealing with that, as well as the fact that Ukraine um, um, is now. The government is now going to be devoid of a, of a, of one of the arms of its of, of power, which is its military power, and that has consequences to the political electorate. Yeah, you say that it's going to be devoid of, of military power in Ukraine because what they, they, they will be. Well, yes, they are they attempting really to to ensure that that um, whatever. Whatever, whatever exists in terms of a military response in the Ukraine um, is, is not there. So the government will be without that yep. uh, over time if, if Russia succeeds uh, the, the way they do it. One of the unknown quantities in this situation is the extent to which um, other countries in, in Europe and, and elsewhere would, would, would add um, military support which um, it appears is, is really not on the cards. But you don't think it, it ultimately will be inevitable because it will seem as though sanctions by themselves won't work. Um, Putin will not listen to, to, to any of that. He, he would not use that as, as any cause for, for him to even stop pause and, and think about what, 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 he's, what he's committed here. And it will get to that, although inside of that, the United States is, is insisting that it is not going to put any of its boots on the ground anywhere near there. And that is a, a significant departure from what we've known, how the United States operated in the past. 
Well, I think one is very concerned that you don't want to create a, a, a permanent um, problem, um, you know, like like happened in in, in um, Syria and elsewhere. Um, one, uh, it, and, and we are comforted by some of the comments coming from the Russian president that he do not intend to, to take over Ukraine. And that is why I have come to the view that the immediate goal is to bring about a regime change in Ukraine um, that is more supportive of the Russian perspective. Well, what's, the, what's the difference? If he gets if he gets to install a government of his choosing, he doesn't have to take it over anymore. <laughs> no, and that, I think, is the objective. Yeah. Um, even the military intervention is meant to, to create the conditions where that is likely to happen. I think if that were to take place, then of course uh, he would satisfy his own re requirement for the security, what he perceived to be security risk to, to Russia through uh, membership in NATO or, 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 or such such measures. Well, why does he have this, this this sort of preoccupation about Russia's security risk? I mean, what, what is what is the, the 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 validity of that in the first place? Well, it has been encircled. Um, Ukraine is a large country uh, next to Russia, uh, and and if it were to fall into the uh, the influence and remit of the of the Western society, uh, and it will become a place for NATO to be and, and all that all that is involved to be more more offensive. It could be a defensive presence. And I think one of the key issues when the matter was first placed on the agenda was to get assurances that NATO, that that these these developments will not proceed. And and of course that was not possible in terms of the dialogue. Um, so therefore, it this is perhaps a perceived a perceived risk. Uh, we don't know the intelligence that is available to see whether that was really a, a risk that will materialize or, or whether it's a risk that is only based uh, as a pretext in order to have the larger uh, objective, which you had alluded to earlier on in this conversation, which is the recreation uh, of the glory of the Soviet empire. Yeah, because a lot of what he seems to have stood for uh, being in, 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 in the presidency, stepping down and becoming prime minister and then coming back into the presidency and, uh, and sort of arranging such that, that he, will, he will reign for as long as he wants, probably until he dies. All of that is, is of a pattern. Uh, and in all of that, he's talking about having lost the prestige of, of the Soviet Union. And it seems as though he, he's, just, he's just determined to try and put everything into getting back there. Well, I think your interpretation um, has validity um, in terms of um, the lost pride and the lost prestige of the Soviet Union uh, has always been a factor in 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 Russia. Uh, and but my my feeling is that um, that will remain and true because it's really. Um, whether or not we had a war to, to try and change that, or whether or not the rise of, of the East um, in, the, in the change in the pendulum between the East and the West um, is really something that's happened in any event. Um, it will not come back in the way in which it was, but clearly the influence of the Eastern countries like China and, and Russia and so forth uh, are going to, to rise. So there's a lot of consequences to that. Um, and I would not, I would not discount the point you have raised as what may have motivated uh, the earlier positions. But I don't think that that might be the immediate motivation for the present crisis. All right. Although this will be the first step. All right. Thank you very much for your analysis on this issue. So, Winston Dukaran, good to see you. It's a pleasure to talk to you as usual, Ian. All the best. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Well, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll share with you the numbers for COVID-19 in our midst on this day at this point. As we move forward, stay with us. Gift giving during a lockdown can still be hassle-free with a gift from FanZone with delivery options available nationwide. Visit and browse our Facebook and Instagram pages for all your official licensed merchandise and apparel and have it delivered to your door. Find us on Facebook and Instagram. FanZone, we've got you covered. The best laptops and tablets are at thebesttoys.com. Get a Gateway 14.1 inch ultra slim notebook or an HP 14 inch laptop at the best prices in TNT. Get the Fire 7 tablet for $474. You can also shop the latest Amazon Fire Sticks. Call now at 32 D Best to order or visit us in store at Forces Flagship Math Bean. Shop online now at thebesttoys.com. Free delivery available throughout Trinidad and Tobago. Cash or links on delivery. Do you think you have what it takes to be a comedian? Fags passenger to come in a taxi with a hundred dollars and don't say nothing. I see driver get takeaway on stretcher for that. WESN is giving you the platform to showcase your comedic skills. What? What? I don't really know how to play guitar. If you think you have jokes, then WESN is the place for you. You know you left the house in your old Bermuda jersey and in match pants, track pants, quite up on the belly of Beyonce. Beyonce was never in cadets, no! Our platform provides a space for creatives to express themselves. And now it's your turn. Oh, 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 so watch your grandma. With a smile. <laughs> Give us a call, 628-5835. We bring the laughs, you bring the jokes. Hey, you wanna jam? You sure, boy? You want we jam? Bruh. Let me read that script. <clears throat> hey, are they ready for we comedy jam? We taking it live. Come on live with us now. Come join us for special taping of we comedy jam at Kaiser Blues Cafe. We bring the laughs, you walk with the drinks money. We Comedy Jam live tapings at Kaiso Blues Cafe. Send us your name to get listed. We Comedy Jam only on WSN Content Capital. So we're not jamming then. Is it politics? What is? It? Is it that nobody cares about sport? The kind of support that sport used to get in the past is it's no longer here. The thing is, taking a knee doesn't mean that that's the only thing you're doing now, Andy. Right. Taking a knee along with other stuff. Samantha, what are you looking forward to when you return home to Trinidad and Tobago after winning the title? Thank you very much for speaking. It's into existence. Is it no pressure on Nicholas Paul? It makes me more motivated to work hard and to go all day and rep the red, white, and black. Why are we sending a team to the Winter Olympics? There are a number of Trinbegonians who are in the diaspora and have grown up in winter sport. It's an opportunity that the Trinidad and Tobago Olympic Committee will not close the door. I also believe in the players that we have. Once you can motivate the players, you can get the best out of them. People really want to know, what about me? Where do I fit? Yes. What is in the ride for me in terms of a better Trinidad and Tobago? And I'm pleased to shed some light on that. The purpose of bail is to ensure your attendance at court. That's it. It is not punitive. It is not rehabilitative. We the police officers, we are professional and we are here for whenever the survivor is ready to come forward. We have the right to private and family life, the right to religious freedoms and beliefs and thoughts and expression. But these rights are not absolute. Certain rights can be limited. The law is to govern. The whole is for all of us in public. Join me, Sule A. Joseph, as I delve into the day-to-day -day psychological issues plaguing our society. We will discuss behaviours that encompass the biological influences, social pressures and environmental factors that affect how you think, act and feel. Sight, Thursdays at 11.30am, only on WESN, Content Capital. A reminder from WESN, we urge you to protect yourself and others from the spread of COVID-19. Stay safe by taking some simple precautions. Clean your hands often. Use soap and water or an alcohol-based hand rub. Maintain a safe distance from anyone who is coughing or sneezing. Wear a mask. 
don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth. Cover your nose and mouth with your bent elbow or a tissue when you cough or sneeze. Stay at home. If you have a fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical attention. Following the above can help us all to help each other. Welcome back to the program. Well, we, we could say that we've been trying to make connection. I, I'm seeing her in, in the frame, but uh, she's not hearing us. She's not connected. We're trying to get to uh, Joanne Tigris Rowley for a segment here uh, in the program. So if, 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 if you could hear us at all, if you have any, if you, somebody is in the house looking at the TV, uh, they will see that we, we're saying we're trying to get to you. Your phone is not on and you're not connected. So if somebody can help you work on that, we'll appreciate that. But right now, let's take a look at the numbers for COVID-19. On, on today's agenda, where they are, the total positive cases, the recovered patients and the rest of it, total active cases, the number of people in hospital. So that's what it is. Uh, 101,019, that's the number of persons reported as totally recovered from the virus. 21,251, that's the number of total active positive cases. 3,603, that's the number of persons who have died after having uh, contracted the virus. 125,864, that's the number of total positive cases reported in the country since we began the counting on March 12, 2020 to yesterday. And 654, that's the number of new positive cases reported in the 24 hours up to yesterday, 654. And 310, that's the number of persons in hospital. That number keeps going down all the time. Although you see the way the numbers are with new reported cases, but people aren't in hospital as, as they would have been at the height of this thing just up a couple of weeks ago. So there's some good news there in, in the trajectory for what those numbers are suggesting. Let's go now to the Newsday poll. And the question is, do you agree with the health officials that it is necessary for COVID-19 protocols to remain in place for the time being? And just read those responses to you. There are five of them. The first one is, no, it's time they do away with all health restrictions. Who live, live and who die, die. We have to learn to live with the virus and be responsible for our own actions. Open back the entire country. And that's one response. Another response says, how is having the, Bra the Brian Lara promenade blocked fight fighting COVID? How is having the Brian Lara promenade blocked fighting COVID? A third response, how mean a car with my husband and child having to mask up and when we in each other's faces when we home fighting COVID. Response four, safe zones now allowing under 12s is right. How are you going to verify children age to know who's supposed to be vaccinated or not for this policy to make sense? And the final response they will leave it in place as a form of control. All of a sudden, COVID numbers, deaths have dropped dramatically. Bars and restaurants, beaches and rivers and schools are open. Loads of people will not return to offices as they will now work from home. So those are the responses to the question. Do you agree with the health officials that it is necessary for COVID-19 protocols to remain in place for the time being? Those are the responses. Let's take a look around the region now, as time permits. We go to Barbados. Uh, where they're talking about um, there was an agreement across some countries, Barbados and Grenada, I think it was, and I saw the story in the paper. They're doing away with roaming charges. Remember when that used to be a big thing when the cell phone technology was introduced? So now they get to the point where they figure it's not necessary. They're doing away with it. Let's get this report from Barbados today. Barbadians and their Caribbean counterparts will pay a fixed rate for roaming as they use their cell phones while traveling across the region. Flo and Digicel are yet to announce the new rates, but at today's official sign-in of the Declaration of St. George's towards the reduction of intra-Caricom roaming rates in Grenada, Prime Minister Mia Motley welcomed the move, but made clear the ultimate goal is the elimination of roaming charges. As we want to allow for competition on rates and services to the benefit of the wide variety of users of voice and data services. So we're not prescribing one way in which costs will fall and be capped. Today, we sign a commitment that you, our people, 
will see new roaming trip packages for citizens of our Caribbean countries over the coming days and coming weeks. We want our citizens to feel it where it matters, in their pockets. We will closely monitor adherence to the commitments made today and follow through. We encourage consumer groups to do so as well. And we are, of course, prepared to take whatever action necessary to ensure that from today, our citizens can enjoy broader services and lower more predictable and capped costs as we move towards that coveted single space and indeed my great dream, the elimination of roaming charges for our citizens in the Caribbean community. Under the deal, the parties have agreed on an implementation time frame between the second and third quarter of this year to make the new rates a reality. Grenada's Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Mitchell, who has responsibility for telecommunications within CARICOM, said the agreement signals the beginning of new opportunities for the region, even as he too stressed the elimination of roaming charges. On the ultimate goal, which is to achieve total elimination of roaming charges throughout the entire CARICOM family. This declaration essentially means that our citizens will have options to use their mobile phones as they move freely within the single space at reduced cost. We firmly believe, therefore, that this critical reduction in roaming charges will help drive digital commerce, regional integration, and economic development and will have an even greater impact when total elimin elimination is achieved. Vice President for the South Caribbean at Cable and Wireless Communications, Curly Prescott, signaled his company's support for the arrangement and pledged that the new single rate will be revealed soon. We at Cable and Wireless are therefore pleased to share that we have taken this first transformation step, transformational step to provide our valued CARICOM customers with significantly reduced roaming packages across the region. Meanwhile, Digital's Director of Government Affairs, Chiron Mulvey, says his company also expects to have its roaming rates in place within a month. He described the signing of the agreement as a very significant event for the Caribbean. And today represents a significant initial milestone again on the roadway towards achieving a single ICT Caribbean space that is so vitally important not just for the social uh, aspects of the economy and peoples of the Caribbean, but for their economic development as well. All right, so let's move quickly now to the situation in St. Lucia. We get this report from DVS TV, which the Prime Minister in his first independence address is calling for people there to put aside what he says are petty differences in favor of shared ambitions. Let's take a look at that. Acknowledging the political divide that currently grips the nation, Prime Minister Philippe Pierre used the platform of his inaugural independence address to call for a bridging of this gap. What has been observed over the past years is the continuity of election-like campaigning even after an election has concluded. Also, support for an administration's policies seems to not be based on merit, but rather on support for the party in office. If St. Lucia is to succeed, these differences will need to be put aside, says Prime Minister Pierre. A half-successful St. Lucia is a totally unsuccessful St. Lucia. If we spend our time making war against one another on the basis of party differences, we will ultimately destroy and consequently the future of our children. I will do my output to bring all St. Lucians together as one family. As he spoke on the issue of gun violence, the Prime Minister stressed the need for each citizen to recognize that their well-being is tied to that of others. Recently, we have witnessed an unacceptable increase in criminal activity, mainly gun-related homicides, causing unnecessary pain and suffering to many. We must end that menace. We must build respect and care for each other. To do so, we must have a sense of self and a sense of identity, celebrating each human life, acknowledging the worth of every human being, calls for strong public education, more equity in the distribution of wealth. However, there must be an observance of the laws of the land, and the police will be expected to do their duty in causing a reduction in crime. 
As a small society, says the Prime Minister, a collaborative and cooperative agenda will ensure that everyone gets fair opportunities. For the DBS News World, I am Zane Romulus. All right, so coming right back home now, the notes before me say this is about making her mark on the Dimash Square 2020. Our guest now, uh, Ms. Joanne Tigress Rowley, f a member of the, f the group known formally as the United Sisters. A couple of years ago, the last time we spoke, she had a song which was a big one in the competition. It had to do, she came out and said, well, look, I, I, I'm going through the throes of depression and I want to express that and I want to advise people about it. It's not something that you, you should keep uh, unattended and keep a secret about. And that was a big one. Um, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning and good to see you too. Yeah. So, so let's talk about what's been happening before we talk about what's going to happen. <laughs> What has been happening with Calypso? What has been happening with me? What has been happening with the world? There is so much going on. Yeah, we're, there we're, is so much going on. Yes. What is going on with Tigress? Tigress is keeping busy culturally. I am keeping very myself active. That's one of the my ther that's one of my therapeutic applications to myself that I keep busy. So I've just come out of WAC Radio Calypso Coliseum, where I had the on the borders Calypso crew, where it was just getting Calypsonians that live abroad to be involved in Carnival 2022. And we did have a really successful run. We had four shows and they were great. Did they call it the, the Calypso Coliseum? Yes, it was the Calypso <laughs> Coliseum and my outfit was Beyond the Borders Calypso crew. Yes, and you said it was it was um, it was a great all virtual. experience. All virtual, and and we flew that flag from London straight back to Grenada. Yeah. So beyond the borders, we were flying everywhere virtually. Yeah, I'm on a, on a personal level, and with with COVID nineteen and so on, how, how how much of a struggle was that? Some people say, you know, the the effects of it and and the the implications of what we had to do we had to stay away we had to keep indoors for a long period of time that messed with some people's heads and some people's sense of it did. yeah it did what it did was taught me ways to get even more active and even how do you market yourself how do you learn to live in the virtual world that's what it did for me and out of that beyond the borders was born uh, i see so you, you, you had a, a, an active hand in the formation of, of that movement called Beyond the Borders. Oh, yes. And we had a really good, four good shows. Six, the cast um, um, comprised of six on the first show, five on the second show, five on the second show, and four on the fourth show. So we did really well. From yeah. Natasha Wilson to Anselm Douglas to Malcolm and Fifi. We even, I even held talks with... Went out in Uganda to fire Empress in London. We had a really, really good time. So I'm just keeping busy. Yeah, Natasha Wilson. I, I haven't heard her name in a, in a while, so she she's still doing her thing. That's that's good. Oh yes, she is very active, and she has an outfit also. But she is she does soca with young people in New York right now. Even Anselm is very busy. He has a talk show, an online talk show also. And like I said, that's what COVID has taught us to do how to work in the new abnormal normal. Yeah, as, as Anselm Douglas. Yes, yes, he was also on the first show. Okay, so so creative people find creative ways to overcome yes. the... We certainly did. We certainly did. We certainly did. I even had Scholar from Grenada, and, and he's a very busy one because, you know, he is the general secretary to the prime minister. And he also did his work, sent it in, and we just had a really wonderful time. Thanks for the virtual world. Yes. And so it, it has not been too stressful, say, on one's, one's mind, one's imagination, you know. Well, it has been extremely stressful because one couldn't come home. Yeah. <laughs> but, again, I am always home because I speak to home every day. So yeah. I may not be here, but my heart is here, and I know all that's going on. All right. So t t talk about um, the, the, the on and offness of some of the events that um, we were looking forward to or we were promised was, was going to happen. Um, what was 
what appeared to be possible changes continue to be made about which which show is is going on, which one is cancelled, and so on. It, it it is sad, but we have to accept this is what it is. And as soon as we accept this is what it is, I think we will be all right. This is what it is. We are in a pandemic. And I applaud the authorities for at least trying because in the United States, carnival is a business. In Trinidad and Tobago, carnival is a release. <laughs> yes. The monies that you would pay for a, for a carnival costume, you would have a broken tooth and you will not go to the dentist. But yeah. you would see you running around that savannah, and I and I was by the savannah day in the week, and I'm like, you know, it, it is sad. There is nobody running around the savannah, because you know it's carnival when you see everybody going around the savannah, and they are going around the savannah because they have to fit in that costume. So for us, it's not business. For us, the trend, for us, the normal trend, Begonian, I'm talking about. Yeah. For us, the normal trend, Begonian, that's a release. That's when we let ourselves go. You have some people, that's the only time they go to a party. Yeah, that's, that's the only time they would go to the Calypso tent. That's it. have some people, that's the only time they listen to Pan. That's the only time they would even get themselves involved in Calypso. For us, it's a release. And when we are not allowed to, ooh, we don't be nice, do we? <laughs> but I think we're really happy for the, for the taste. We're happy for the taste. Of course, you know us. If we get a taste, we want a mouthful. <laughs> if we get a mouthful, we want a plateful. You know that's who we are. That's what makes us Trinbegonians. <laughs> but we're happy for the taste. Yes. Uh, and so all, all the debate that is happening as to whether it, it was it was worth it um, one day before a show is scheduled to happen, it's, it's, it's called off. You think all, all of that, we have to take it in a certain context. It, it, it's, it's us. And... It's the uncertainty. It's the. It's it's just sad that this is what it is. It is just sad that we, it's everybody's choice of of whether they get vaccinated or not. That would also come into play. But I do applaud everywhere you go. You wash your hands. I don't know one one and I have no water, but all these taps have water. So it's we are just in limbo everywhere in culture in our normal daily lives it's it's just that we are in limbo so yes one day here yeah, it's on because even and i think that affected even the the clash of the tents at naparima bowl yes. because everybody was uncertain about if it's happening so people were just like do i buy a ticket do i where do you even get a ticket because of the uncertainty of the event but something happened and there were those who there who enjoyed it yeah, some of the reports that I've been seeing is that um, the, the attendance was not, uh, not not very encouraging, but some people continue to... And it know. would have been because there was uncertainty around the show. There was no marketing done for the show when it was finalized. So you were unsure about anything, but it have those that will keep their ears to the ground and they were there. And who was there, they did have a good time because it really was a great show. Yeah. Not be, not just because I was on it, but it really was a good show. <laughs> yes. Um, so let's talk about your contribution or what, what, what your what your aspiration is for. So you're going to, you're in the you in in the in the finals, right? I am in the top ten Calypsonians who's going to showcase Calypso on Sunday night because it's not a competition. It's not a competition. But so you, you're not talking. I think so. Yes. Because things that change as we go. But as far as I know, it's not a competition. <laughs> I like how you say that. Think, things and that's the only reason I got involved because it's not a competition. It's not a competition, and you, you think that it, it it's good not being a competition, but a show in which people would come out and perform. It's just a show. It's not a competition. I still think the time was too short, although although the time was too short for Calypsoians to be ready who were unsure about what is happening. Although I must applaud the mass because I looked at the mass the other night and I was like, whoa, <laughs> give you, that was a wow moment, a OMG moment. It was beautiful. But Calypso is a little different because you have to be recorded. You, it's 
front. So it's not a competition. It's just a showcasing of Calypso. Yeah. And that I was happy with. Right. And, and so it comes down to this, this final 10 for, for Sunday night and, and, and you in there. What are you, what are you doing? Sense. Yeah. What, what, what are you... What are you I, I, we lost you there. You're saying what? Yes, I said it's just a showcase of Calypso. Yeah. Given see, your, your campaigns abroad and so on, the time you spend abroad, you know, sort of promoting the culture abroad um, and, and people's feelings about carnival in other countries and certainly up north and so on. The, the, you know, the, the, the argument here is that um, so nobody's going to come to, to witness what, we, what we're doing here in this Days of Carnival 2022. What's the value of it? What do you say to, to, to people like that? I it's it's as narrow as it is wide for me because I have friends that flew in yesterday. Okay. I have friends that's coming in today. So while we might be here questioning it, there are people on the outside who is elated that there is something. I know for a fact Miami Carnival Association is sending a representation. Orlando Carnival have representation here also. So while we might be, yes, we're not sure, there are others that's looking on. Because again, like Brother Mudara said, we are the Mecca. Yeah. So people is look, you know, they are looking on. And while we are saying we are uncertain, there are people who's happy for it and coming in for it also. While we while there are people here that's questioning it, there are also people that's going out. Because you could see shows that full and people are having a wonderful time. I looked at, I listened to Kaiso House last night in the gardens and the president was there and they had a beautiful show and audience also. So it is narrow as it is wide because while there are some that's questioning it and then there are some that's questioning it because of the safe zone, but it's not Tuku, it's not NCC, it's, that's the law, it's the Ministry of Health and it is what it is yeah I, it I, is I, I, you don't have any issues safe, with that although i have a question mark over what is really a safe zone yes. but it is what it is <laughs> yeah all right so so we might as well make make the best of a bad situation and from what you say and that's it, what that's all i'm saying yeah. we get we get this let's just make fun of it one might question they're working for small money if you really love your calypso, and this is just me, I speak for no one. Yeah. This is just me. If you love your calypso, but, and like someone always remind, remind me, 1996, I sang that. And you love your kaiso. If you love your kaiso, you will be there for it through thick and thin. All right. Good talking to you. We're going to have to leave it there, Joanne Rowley, Tigress. Thank good. you so much. And it's so good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> All right, take it care. It really is so we are looking forward to a beautiful show on Sunday night and right. flying the the feminine flag is really an honor because I really wish I hadn't helped. But it's me alone, so but I will hold it down for the women. All right, thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much and have a great day and do enjoy the taste. You too. Thank you very much. Well, Thank news you. is up ahead following that on the other side. Steve Antoine, the man who says he's not comfortable with the fact that um, he says people of Afro heritage in Trinidad and Tobago don't have our proper place in society. Stay with us. We're coming back with that after the news. Seven is out. All day is in. WESN News on the hour. Every day we communicate through stories. Stories of ourselves, our challenges, our goals, our experiences, and our aspirations. Storytelling is an art. An art that we have mastered. WESN Film Studios comprises a collaborative team of experts with extensive industry experience locally, regionally, and internationally.
ability of your business to successfully communicate with your preferred audience depends on the strength of the stories you tell. Your vision should be communicated in a high quality, professional and creative way. From concept to post-production, advertising to film, multi-camera productions, live events, streaming and virtual conferencing, we are WESN Film Studio. Let your own unique voice be heard and your vision realized. Call us today at 628-5835 for your next production. We are WESN, the premier platform for Caribbean content. WESN, covering West, East, South, and North. WESN, we entertainment, sports, and news. WESN, available on Green Dot 7, Amplia 118, Air Link 17, B Mobile 107, Digital 21, ICN TT 105, and Flow 110. Connect with us at WESNCC or stream online at www.wesncc.com. WESN, your premier platform for Caribbean content. Let your voice be heard. Call Madam Fix It on WESN, the only place that effectively helps you with your woes. Having problems getting onto government agencies, water woes, NIS and pension problems, potholes, and much, much more. Call me, Madam Fix It, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, right here on WESN. Let me fix it for you. Alexa, can you play my song, please? Every day across Trinidad, Flo is connecting communities near and far. Our dedicated teams are always working to keep you connected to the world beyond your doorstep. Improving internet accessibility across Trinidad, one home at a time. At Flow, we work hard for you, so you work hard for your family on the largest high-speed network. Connecting you to more every day with Flow. It may seem like the hardest thing to do right now, but we all need each other to wear a mask, wash our hands, watch our physical distance, and stay at home. We need you safe. Together we can make the difference. Together we can curb the spread of COVID-19. So let's be responsible in our actions. The Trinidad and Tobago Red Cross Society. Mission-based, people-focused, community-driven. Welcome back to the program. Well, we've had him on in the last couple of weeks. He has uh, some concerns of what he says that with the place, the proper place of people of, of Af Afro heritage in Trinidad and Tobago, he says we have nothing. And he continues to want to, he's, a, he's campaigning on that issue as to why that is the situation. Mr. Steve Antoine, described as a concerned citizen, he's back with us this morning. Good morning, good to see you. A pleasant morning to you, sir, and I want to especially thank you for giving me the opportunity once again to hear my views. I was last year on December the 16th, All right. <laughs> and I want to especially thank you again for giving me the opportunity, sir. Pleasant morning to you and the people of Trinidad and Tobago. All right, we try to give a voice to everybody who we think deserves this, and most people, most people do, from one, from one aspect or the other, from one issue to the other. So you have some real concerns about what you're talking about, what you see, uh, and you don't see around you, right? Yes, sir. I, I do have issues, and um, respectfully so, uh, we are living in a, a diverse place, Trinidad and Tobago, with different races, Hindu Trinidadians, along with a lot of other people in our space, and 
my humble view is that when I and and and, and before I move on, let me do like most people blame COVID <laughs> because of the COVID. You know, I did a lot of introspection. You know, you have nothing to do. It's the, there's a state of emergency, stay in your home. You, you know, a lot of people did a lot of soul, soul searching. And I realized, and I, and I realized that it was a wrong emancipation. And two emancipations has passed. And normally for emancipation, you know, we have to gather. And two emancipations has passed and nothing. And I decided, you know what, let, let me see where we are at and where we are going in terms of land space for the afro Trinidadian, And I want to say Trinidadian black people. Because I don't want to sound too Afrocentric in terms of Africanism and going that aspect of the thing. Because people who tend to take a way back to say, first of all, we have to find ourselves, who we are, where we, that kind of thing, you know, to try and delay the process. You see? And I'm asking my God to give me that endurance that testicular fortitude, not to give up, but to keep questioning as to why at this point in time we doesn't have a space, yeah? What, now, what, what do you, you mean by that? You can anytime, Mr. Johnson. What, what, I don't want to just like be the one just to speak and you don't want to, you know, you could feel free to ask me a question what, or stop what do you me at any point that? in time. What do you mean by that, that uh, we don't have a space? Right. Um... I'm speaking on a national point of view. If I could compare, and, and I want to compare respectfully, I do not want to take this into we and them or trying to make it a racial or, how could I put it, in any way to create any pulling and tugging. And that's the problem because most times it's about I, I, I did this, I that. You know, so if we could come together and say we and get things done, it would be better. So the question you ask, what do I mean by in terms of peace? Now, in comparison to there's a place in the West where I used to go as a child. You know, my mother used to take me there to pay 10 cents. And now that entire beach front, yeah, there is a park. And kudos to them and that entire beachfront. I did a survey and you're, you're I talking about Shagville? at five. Sorry? You're talking about Shagville? Shagville, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. That entire beachfront, uh, which is adjoining Pier 1, I drove in my vehicle at 20 miles per hour doing a video sir, And it took me close to five minutes to cover that entire space. Yeah? And this is what I'm speaking about in terms of land space. In right, right coming up higher up, sir. Where the movie town place is there, you recall years ago, there was the Mecca, Soka village. And it, that place was run by a gentleman by the name of Mr. William Monroe. And it was told to him that because of the damaging of the natural space there, nothing could have happened. But now there is movie town and other hotels are joining that same compound, sir. Yeah. And it's things like that I am speaking to. We have the Diwali Nagar. Yeah, and, I, and I'm, again, I want to reiterate and say that I'm not doing anything to compare or try to, I wouldn't say compare, but try to create any kind of divisiveness in terms of when, when I use a place for in alignment of what I'm speaking to. Yeah? Did the world in Agar, I mean, they have their space, and under their body, they have numerous schools, numerous schools under that body, the Hindu body. And then we go to, to Baraka grounds. Yeah? And Mr. Ismail, a gentleman who, and also Mr. Satmaraj, who is deceased, who, who my people would look at and speak to their negatives in terms of negatives, but they wouldn't understand. My good book says, why look at something in somebody else's eye when there is a log in your eye? Mr. Ismail, over the years, has championed the cause for a property. He has that property. And over 10 years, I heard that gentleman, gentleman speaking to about a hospital. And to date, realistically, 
for those who do not know where the Baraka grounds is and the, the Walina ground, the Walina garage, they could drive up to Shogonas and on entering Shogonas. Sometimes I feel if that is the capital of Trinidad and Tobago. And I'm not trying to be facetious in any way. I'm just speaking to what I see as a Trinidadian who was born in this country. Yeah? Mr. Inshan Ismail years ago indicated a hospital. And you know something? As a hospital is now being constructed on that said compound. Yeah? And he of himself doesn't, isn't, isn't doing it. He isn't looking for handouts from the government to say he wants that. He has a program and he will go on that program and he will lobby and he will indicate to them, we need this, we need that. And I am seeing things happen. So I am wondering... He has, my a country, station. he has a TV station. Where I live. Sorry, sir? I said he has a whole TV station. He has a channel. Yes, he has his own. Right. He has a station whereby he could go and lobby. I see. I see, saw Mr. Pinson Ismail recently indicated that the steel structure has to be supposed to go up. And he was, no, there is a word under the Muslim people where there is a word which connects there is a, in other words, there is a word which signifies or clarifies that type of giving, yeah? And anybody could look it up whereby you will put something to get something in terms of building a foundation for the future generation, yeah? And he's now in the hospital and on his program, he asks, he start, people start to call in. You think that's that that's very what they call that Zakat? night when he asked to, for people to, to, to put monies as regards the structure of that hospital, he had a gentleman with a young baby to raise $85,000. And he did it within 25 minutes. He raised that. I don't want to get to I, I just try my best to be placid to be, you know? Yeah. He raised that money that said night, that said night means that Mr. Inshan is smell. He raised that money for that gentleman for the help of that young baby on his program. So I am saying where we are at, where are we going in terms of land space on that? I am not speaking about a piece of two by four. I'm speaking on a nation and I use the emancipation support committee because this, the Emancipation Support Committee, includes all of us. Because on Emancipation Day, we know what we do on Emancipation Day. We know how we dress in the apparel. We are not, I mean, and, and, and move on, and together we do something. But I think it's time we have a space. If we have a space, that space is supposed to be big enough where we could create different things. So Carnival don't have to go nowhere else. Yeah? When we have international shows, they don't have to go anywhere else because we could develop that space. That space could now become commercial, self-sustainable. Self so therefore, we don't have to go to no government after that space is given so that we have to depend on the government for this. No. I always say 100,000 of us. By $100 is 10 million. And if we are serious to see where we are at now in terms of what we have and what could be given to us in terms of the land space and development that I am saying our young people, our young people could have a space to over the because and let me say this there. I, I just try to say things which wouldn't agitate. My main intention is to have certain people, they know themselves, or everyone who is seeking the rehabilitation for a better word for the Afro Trinidadians that they don't get tired, they don't get weary. Some of them are overworked. I know. Yeah, the gentleman, the gentleman who I addressed this that particular letter letter to what have plummeted me to do what I am doing now. They have work and still working, Mr. Kwesi Atiba, Mr. Harvey Boris, Mr. David Mohammed, Mr. Kafra Kambon. Mr. Fitzgerald Hines, and they are men, and Mr. Selwyn Kojo. I know, I know they have work, still working, and then sometimes they have made probably something which stopped them from getting what's supposed to be due to us. But I am saying, please, gentlemen, let's wake up and do an analysis in terms of the justice system. The scales of justice are supposed to be balanced. And I am saying this morning, 
in our sphere of things, it is not. Because the places I called out, I asked anyone to tell me what do we, the, Af the Afro-Trinidadian or the Trinidadian black people have that we could line up or is in alignment with the places I just spoke about. Be the Wali Nagar, the Five Islands, the movie Tong area, and Baraka Grounds. What? Tell me. Tell me what do we have to compare in that aspect of things in a national point of view to right. say yes. Uh, we have this, so see with that gentleman talking, he's looking for, for some kind of kuchuru or bacchanal, kang, katang, lakare. No. Right, so I, what is I, the, what I, is the I, letter you wrote? What is the letter you wrote then? What does it say? What does it ask? You, 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 you wrote... Well, 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 sir, this letter, I will browse through very quickly as to what I wrote on this letter. This letter, sir, was written on the 26th of April, 2021. And I addressed the letter to the said gentleman who I just called out, which is Mr. Kafra Cambon, David Mohammed, Gracia Tiba, Harvey Boris, Mr. Fitzgerald Hines, and Mr. Selwyn Kuju. I will start and I will try to go as quick as possible. This letter was a five-page le five letter, and I condensed it. I tried all how COVID. I say, you know what? When would I be able to speak on this? And then I say, you know what? If not now, when? Dear sirs, I write this letter with humility and the utmost level of respect in spite of the fact that I am hurt and by extension very angry. Also taking the consideration that we are in a pandemic, I am very passionate about the subject matter which I am about to, this, to question. And on the top of the letter, question is what I have put to the top. If you look, question, this letter went out this way. And... All right, so what, is the, what to, is the question? What is, just, you know, to, in the interest of time, what is the question you're asking them? Well, I, I, I described who I was and what have you. I indicated at the age of 10 years, 1970, I saw people leaving my home, you know, with red apparel. I took two red ribbons. And, I mean, the main question, I wouldn't yes. want it to be too long. Right. The main question, in closing at the end of the letter, as I, I said, at the second line paragraph, I said, all my years, I have looked up to men who I perceive in my respectful view, who has championed the cause of, in some way or another, to the upliftment of Afro-Trinidadians. When I reflect on that page for the year 1970, 50 years ago to date, and I'm speaking about 50 years ago, when I was 10 years and I went in and I took my sister's two red ribbon and I saw Mr. Kandaga, Makandal Daga, and I'm, when I reached home, my mother beat me and tell me, who the hell, what the hell you know about Makandal Dada, you know? And as I lived, I, 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 a lot more transpired, but I will move on quickly. For example, and I, and I indicated, who has championed the cause of land space for the unfortunate idea? It hurts. I am very passionate, passionate about the said matter. When I say land space, I do not mean land space for everyone, yeah? And I zero in on the fact that different places like the Baraka grounds, the five islands and what have you. And in closing, in the last part of the letter I indicated, to a lesser extent, Port of Spain, Charlotte Street, now Chinatown. And everybody could pass in Charlotte Street and see that. So that's an identification of the Chinese people, which nothing is wrong with that. I'm not, I'm not trying to criticize. I'm just trying to highlight where we are at and where we are going. So what, what's been their and, response to you? What's, there been, what's been their response? You, have you gotten any response from any of them? Not an iota of response. So hence the reason why I am still here agitating. Hence the reason I am still here asking. Hence the reason I'm so passionate. And in my heart, I believe something could be done. The last part of the letter quoted, my question is, what is on the agenda, if anything at all, regarding land space for a fortunate Adam committee? For, for example, celebration of Emancipation Day. And I only choose Emancipation Day. I don't want it song Afrocentric. I only choose Afro an Emancipation Day to show the, on that day, the amount of people who would gather. Why can't we gather in our space? Why can't we make that space viable, commercially driven? Why can't we place ourselves on the landmark or a land space of Trinidad and Tobago? 
something is not right. That's L-A-N-D. A lot of people is afraid to speak on that situation. Yeah, so you're saying that um, it, it should be a space that is separate from, say, the Queen's Park Savannah, which is the people's savannah. You, you well, sir, that? I'm glad you mentioned that, you know. I'm glad. If is the Queen's Park Savannah supposed to be given, why not give it? So you see, it could have a, a, a level of management whereby... It, so let me say this to you. Every year, and all of us know this, Carnival, you know, sir, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. If we build a space and spend millions to build it and then spend millions to take it down, so are we going anywhere, sir? And that's a different dimension in terms of this talks. Because in closing, I could also mention... I am speaking to land, asking kindly for lands to be given. But in Trinity, when you leave Trinity, I don't know if there is a, a, a building there, sir. Over 20 plus years, my God, a commercially viable area. You're talking, about what, should, you're talking about what should have been the headquarters of Pantron Bay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why can't, is it true that they say African people don't know how to run business or Trinidadian black people cannot run business? Is it true? I'm asking questions here. I think it is time. Everybody is going after sensationalism in terms of trying to get likes. Who want to get more likes than who? Because we are in a social media era now where people want to see how much people is, is on board while I speak. So people look to go after sensual, sensationalism and not looking realistically at what's happening around them. Um, I also use the analogy whereby... There is something called a bridle, which is placed on a horse. And I am saying, sir, I took off my bridle because I want to see what's happening around me. The reason for a bridle and a horse is so the horse to look straight ahead so it wouldn't be distracted because that horse would have won that horse to win the race. I am asking my people here, and I wouldn't go there because I want to say me. I want to use me as an example because when you say certain things, people may say, Tracy, so you have a bridle on. I am saying I took off my bridle, sir. I am looking what's happening around me. Let's be real. All these people, and, and pretty soon, pretty soon, we have some people, the Venezuelans here, and they are the faces of all our businesses, the groceries, the jock stores, and sometime, pretty soon, somebody will speak on behalf of these people, and who knows, they might get a space before us. And so you're saying that nobody, well, well people are speaking on, on behalf of us, but it's not getting anywhere. That, that's that's your point. It. You're saying that, but they are all all these people you refer to the people who you addressed the letter to. You would identify them as spokesmen for for the Afro Trini, right? But you're saying they're not. As I, as I indicated in the letter, so I, I indicated and I said over the years I've looked up to Afro Trinidadian and all these people who have called in some way or another, in some way or another has been fighting or championing the cause of afro Trinidadian in terms of a lot of things. So this is why I ask the question. But they're not getting anywhere. What? That's your point, that they're not getting anywhere and nothing is being delivered for the afro well, Trinidadian. That's, well, that's, your, that's I mean, your point. You see, so if a discussion is hard, every there is a discussion. No, I do not know the friendship or camaraderie among these men. So therefore, I cannot speak to the fact that, and I know, as I said, these gentlemen are, have worked hard in the vineyard, all of them. But I am saying, I, I think it's time to put away differences, put me out of the pit here, because I am like nothing. I'm like a cockroach. Yeah, in power but the, what I'm trying to get at, what I'm trying to get at is that not, none of them has responded to, that has even responded to you, right? That That's what no, you're saying. No, no, sir, not, and I, I wouldn't ask anyone to respond to me. I would ask that if they could, even on your station, respond on a national point of view, and, and I, I must say, let me let me say thus far, only persons have received the letter, and I have done the letter to hand it in manually. I didn't right. post any letter, but manually I gave Mr. Harvey Boris a letter. All right. I gave to Mr. David Mohammed a letter. I gave to Mr. So you 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 distributed it to all of them, right? So yes, I, I'm, I'm just saying with that. With the I'm, exception of Mr. Fitzgerald Hines and Mr. Selwyn Kojo, all right. I, they have received the letter just um, manually. You still you still intend to do that to to get? Of course. Sir. Right. All right. So we we gotta leave it there. But let's see what happens. Let's see what what the reaction might be to to the fact that you've you've come forward and, and made this statement and made this plea uh, at this point. All right.
Let's see what happens. I do appreciate, sir. I do appreciate and all thank right. you very, very much. And I wish you all the success in your endeavors, sir. And a pleasant day to you all and right. your I station. You. Well, we wish you all the success in yours as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Steve much and Time. Let's, all right. So let's, let's go swiftly now to the watch this on this list here. Today's uh, highlight. Some of the gut-wrenching events taking place since the Russian attack on Ukraine began. Take a look at this. So before we go, let me just let me just say this. You know, there was a, a question to to members of the public, to the readers of the newspaper, one day last week after that blackout incident. We had the question is, what do you think? Uh, anyone will be held responsible for Wednesday's nationwide power outage. And these are some of the responses to that question. No one has ever been held accountable for the mess this nation has been in since 2015. Demanding answers, somebody says. Somebody else says, sad and poor. Someone must answer and lose their jobs as to how and why this occurred. Another response was, this was the worst outage since March 29, 2013, when power went for the whole of the night. Another person says, I don't know why they wouldn't. Somebody says, they think they might get a raise instead. We will not get answers. What a joke. Has anyone been held for anything before? Do not start to incite any reaction to what happened on Wednesday. It's not really important right now. Another person said, no one will be held accountable for this mishap. And then somebody also said, do you all think someone will be held accountable for this action? I don't think so. It might just happen again. So there is this thirst for somebody to be held accountable. But let me just tell you, my own sense is that there are things that can happen outside of whether or not anybody should be held responsible. There are system challenges that, that take place, and this appears to have been one of them. I was told by someone who knows this business what we're talking about is that, well, a tree fell on a line, and that line collided with another line, and threw the system out of kilt. We're talking about 220 uh, kilovolts of live action falling on a line and tripping the system. I'm told that there was something, there's something called the, the response of a, a black starting machines. I'm told it had to do with the power purchase agreements um, with the government, with the stations such as the TGU and PowerGen and uh, IncoGen and what should have happened. There's something called the black start arrangement that the, the system should have kicked in to restart power plants and restart the feed. It happened in, in, in one case in one part of the country. Some people in one uh, district were getting some electricity and then the system failed to, to, 
to take up the, the, the load as it were, from what I understand, and that put it out of, of compliance for the time that it took to get it back, and, and that um, the system itself was not responding in the way that it was designed to respond. And that is hard to figure out why that was the case, and it is possible that there is no responsibility for any single person or even any group of people outside of those who put together the what I'm what I'm told is the power purchase arrangements that were, that are in place and they need probably to be revised. So the, the, the question is to what extent we can look for any salvation from the finding of guilt for someone here. We have to leave it there for now. Thanks for watching. That's our broadcast for this morning. As always, we tell you, you can stay with us here at WESNCC on all social media platforms and send your emails to amprime at WESNCC.com. News at the top of the hour, followed by today's edition of Talking Point with Shah and Small. I'm Andy Johnson. Also to tell you that um, in a couple hours, I'll be back with today's edition of 10 Questions. My guest is Gabriel Faria the retired Chief Executive Officer of the Chamber of Commerce in Trinidad and Tobago. He has a new agenda. We'll talk about that then. But for now, enjoy your morning.